Hi everybody, this is Apostle Misha Safdie welcoming you to this Tuesday night edition of Studying the Word. And so this evening, folks, we've got a good one, <clears throat> one that probably a lot of people are interested in. And so we're going to believe the Lord to just lead us this evening and I uh, want to make sure that I give everyone a uh, chance to sign on. If I look a little bit tired and I seem a little bit out of breath, I just got home from a long drive, about eight hours of driving uh, back and forth out of state. So uh, um, bear with me, okay? So let's uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for just the opportunity, <clears throat> Lord, again, to bring a, another study in the word, Lord, and I pray that uh, Lord, that you'll anoint me to to speak your words, Lord, under the uh, just total anointing of your spirit. Lord, they not be my words, uh, but yours. And Lord, that you'll open up a spirit of understanding and revelation to all of those that are listening uh, this evening and those that will look on later. And Lord, that you'll, re you'll, you'll bring revelation to us in this very important area of deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray, and I thank you for it. Amen, amen. Before we get into this this evening, I'd like to just again to make a couple of announcements. If you're watching on Facebook uh, Live, do me the personal favor of hitting the like button if you've enjoyed the message and if it's helped you. And more importantly than that, hit your share button because all of you have friends on your Facebook pages that I don't have, and I may never have the opportunity to minister to them, but if you'll share the message and write something above it, and maybe it helped you, maybe it was something of interest to you, um, you can write your own greeting, uh, your friends will look at it, and maybe there's somebody there that needs help, and this message will help them. <clears throat> Our goal <clears throat> is to get the gospel as uh, around the world to as many places as we can and uh, so i encourage you to do that if you're watching on youtube okay or um i i would appreciate this okay that you go to the um like button and hit that but that you also subscribe folks i need subscribers because when i have a lot of subscriptions and I haven't tried to really <clears throat> um, push the whole YouTube thing. I'm just doing it now and and, and, and uh, downloading a lot of my messages or uploading a lot of my messages into YouTube because I understand uh, that we're seeing more censorship with Facebook and I expect that to continue. So we want to make sure we have another venue. So if you subscribe, what that does is instead of people having to just look for me by name or look for a particular message by title, um, and the more subscriptions we have allows the message actually to be sent by YouTube to the phones of anybody, people I don't even know. Other people maybe have an interest and have expressed an interest and, uh, uh, you know, these, uh, well, I don't know what you call them, these things that search the internet, spiders or whatever you want to call them, not the kind that we step on folks but or use with raid but uh uh or algorithms or whatever they uh will attract people that have an interest in these things to the word of god and so the message will actually be sent out to them okay so if you're <clears throat> interested in subscribing do me a big favor go to the youtube page you can find it under my name which is right here misha softier just look up misha softier and you'll see tons of messages or you can go to uh, our End Time Ministries right here and, with Misha Softier, and you'll see the messages there. In either case, you can subscribe. And so I would encourage you to do that, okay? So, well, <clears throat> let's get into this, all right? Um, so we're going to talk tonight about the transfer of demonic spirits. Now, this is going to open up a lot of questions. I I don't know if I can cover everything, you know, in the time that I want to do it. I'd like to keep this under 45 minutes. I'm going to do my best to do that. But this is a, a, a lot larger of a topic. If I don't cover everything, it doesn't mean that we don't 
have more that we could put into this, but I want to get some, just some of the basic essentials. First of all, it's important to let you know that in Christ, you're free, okay? Christ frees you from demonic possession and from demonic oppression. Now, <clears throat> you need to know the difference between the two before we start, okay? Possession is something that take, pl takes place inside of you. In other words, um, the devil can can uh, possess your your body and possess your soul, your mind, okay? Um <clears throat> he can take he can completely take you over that's demon possession oppression so possession occurs from the inside and oppression it's different than possession oppression occurs from without or from the outside so a spirit may not be able to or may not possess you but it can oppress you and believe me there are some people that have been oppressed for more for as many years almost as they've been alive by spirits and others that there are others that have been fully possessed. Okay, so then the next question comes before I even get into scripture is, and, and people will ask because they're always wondering, so let me just get to the answer <clears throat> right now. <clears throat> and the question is, can a Christian be demon possessed? Um, in my, my belief, my answer to this question is no. I don't believe a Christian can be demon possessed, but I believe a Christian can be oppressed. So in other words, I don't believe that uh, that a, de a demon can take over a Christian from the inside, but I believe that he can be oppressed from the outside. But that being said, folks, you have to ask yourself the question first, who, who really is a Christian and what is a Christian? Because there are people that call themselves Christians and they're not, okay? They have made they, they may believe in God, but they haven't made the decision. They haven't asked Christ into their life as their Lord and Savior. And they're not walking, uh, you know, with him. And so, you know, they could be open to possession. But again, I would not consider that person a Christian. I would consider that a person that believes in God, believes in Jesus. So there's a difference, okay? Most people that are uh, Christians that go through demonic assaults and things are oppressed. This is a spirit that will harass from the outside. And that spirit uh, can come to harass Christians or unbelievers. And 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 so there's a difference and you need to, to know that. Now, there are some people that teach that a Christian can be demon possessed, that their spirit can't be possessed, but their soul the you know, can. Now, you need to know the difference. Your soul is a part of you. It's your your mind and your understanding, your spirit is the part of you that communes with God, and then your physical body is what you see when you look at me or when I look at you, okay? So there are, there are some people that teach that a person's soul can be possessed while their spirit it remains free and, and worships God, but I, I, I don't believe that can happen. I believe the soul can be oppressed, and I believe it can be attacked, but I don't believe it can be oppressed. And the reason I take that view is because I don't believe that the Spirit of Christ and the Spirit of Satan can dwell in the same uh, temple. And, our, and, the, and the Bible says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And and I don't think, I think the last thing that the devil wants is a direct confrontation with Christ. So I don't believe personally myself, and I'm in the majority that teach this, I don't believe that uh, a Christian can be uh, physically possessed um, by, by a demon. But I do believe Christians can be and often are oppressed. So we're going to get into this and we're going to talk about it now for a minute now that I've answered that question. And I want to go into uh, the book of Matthew chapter 12 and we're going to look at also Luke chapter 11 and we're going to make a comparison of scripture here so just to, to get a, a real clear understanding of the whole picture of what this scripture says and this is i'm reading out of the new king james version of the bible but if you have another translation uh the king james or any or new american standard or any other translation um that's that's, that's a, a dependable translation you should be able to follow along with no problem okay so Excuse me, we'll, we'll get into this now, okay? So beginning in Matthew 12, verse 43 40 through 45, uh, the scripture reads as follows, that when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. 
<clears throat> this is Jesus speaking, by the way. And then he says, I will return to my house. The house is the dwelling, folks, the body. The unclean spirit is the demon. And we're talking about a, a man that's possessed. So in this case, uh, in my view, an unbeliever. But in the case of a believer, it, it could be an oppression. of a, a spirit may not actually inhabit that person, but it could be oppressing him. And and it could be cast out and cast away. We We often pray for deliverance over people uh, you know, they're they're being harassed and oppressed by a demonic spirit. They're not possessed by it, but they're oppressed. And these are other believers. And we pray and that spirit will leave. But folks, if something doesn't happen, it can return. And in, in the case of a pure demonic possession, where we're dealing with a person that's not a Christian and, and, and not, 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 not under the covering of the blood of Christ, okay, a, a, a demonic spirit, and I've seen this happen, demonic spirits be, can be cast out and they can return if, if if something doesn't take place and they can return and the state of that person can even be worse. And we see this now. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty. Folks, keep that word empty in mind, okay? He finds it empty, swept, and put in order. What does that tell you? It tells you that, okay, that it's been cleaned out. It's to that, that it's totally cleaned out. It's swept out. It's put in order, okay? But th then he goes and he takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first, okay? so shall it be with this wicked generation. And the generation that would, would, would exist and come, though that type of thing would become a, 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 a common, common, a commonplace event. Okay, now let's look at this in the book of Luke, the same scenario, okay? Luke chapter 11, verse 24 through 26 says this, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return to my house, again to the body from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. The other, uh, 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 in Matthew states, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Okay, so in other words, that 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 that, that spirit, and any oppressive spirit, or spirits, or any 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 uh, demonic uh, the, the demonic spirit that's left. Any any other spirits, any other uh, vestiges of that, they've been cast out. The the, the person is, is totally delivered and clean. And that spirit desires to come back, okay? Whether it's in the form of possession or whether it's in the form of oppression. Folks, it will always seek to return. We know when Jesus went was tempted on the mountain, he wasn't oppressed, but Satan was there to tempt him. Uh, when he went into the wilderness, okay? He goes into the wilderness and he's tempted, right? And at the very end of the scripture, if you read it, after Jesus uh, passed all the temptations and didn't yield to any of them, the Bible says, and Satan departed until an opportune time. So what is my point? My point is that the devil will always look to try to return. Many of you can testify yourself and you've been delivered and set free, but you know that Satan will sometimes come back and see and lay some bait in front of you in the way that he's gotten you the past to see if you'll go for it. And sometimes spirits will come that know your past because they're, they're familiar spirits. The reason we've heard that term familiar spirits, why? Because they've been around for generations and they're familiar with things and familiar with people and familiar with you because they've been watching you your entire life so they know how you've fallen. And while they may not be able to possess you and, may, and while they may not be oppressing you, okay, they are looking to find an inroad to get back in to where they can oppress you if they can't possess you, all right? And so that spirit is always looking for a place to return. So what do we have to do, folks, in order to keep the, the person the, the, I'm sorry, to keep that, that person free and keep that spirit from returning, okay? You've got to fill the empty spot. You've got to fill the void, okay? This is a, uh, something that's very important in deliverance um, because I have seen ministers 
and other people uh, lay hands on a person, cast a spirit out, and, I, and, and I've seen the spirit leave, both in oppression and in possession. I've seen it happen in both instances. But the void wasn't filled, okay? And you have to, that person immediately upon being delivered needs to accept Jesus Christ into their heart. And if possible, be filled, be baptized with the Holy Spirit, okay? But certainly, you know, to have that, that, that spirit of regeneration where your human spirit is being regenerated by the Spirit of Christ and the Spirit of Christ is actually dwelling within you. That happens when you make a decision and, 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 and um, a complete surrender of, of, of will and of obedience, spirit, soul, body, you give it all to Jesus, okay? And when you do that, you have filled the void. Christ is now dwelling within your body, which is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And so <clears throat> that demon seeks to return, but he can't get in. He doesn't want to get in, okay? Because the Spirit of Christ has already taken that empty place, all right? you <clears throat> Folks, <clears throat> there are some people, and I meet, run into them all the time, they tell me, I, I believe God has called me for a, a ministry of deliverance. Well, if you believe the Lord has called you for that, you have to understand, folks, that in the name of Jesus, okay, you can cast spirits out. You absolutely can. But you're not doing that person any favors, okay, if you cast the spirit out and you don't fill the void. When I pray for a person, <clears throat> sometimes I have to cast spirits out if they're possessed or if they're oppressed, just so they can hear the word of God so they can make that rational decision to accept Christ. So you cast it out, but you have to go the rest of the distance. Um, it's almost, I hate to say it, but it's almost better, you know, uh, it's almost better not to deliver a person if they don't want to make a decision for Christ. But, but on the other hand, it's like a catch-22 situation because some people, before they can even make that decision, or they can be in such a, a bad state that they need deliverance just to be free to be able to 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 really make that decision. So you know, it's it's it, but it, it's a iffy situation. I've never refused to deliver or or, or or pray deliverance for anybody unless if they had come to me and told me they didn't they they don't want to be delivered. Um, they don't they 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 want to be possessed. They they or they want to be oppressed and. You know, they, they you can't force somebody. Uh, there have been a few times where there was a spirit over somebody, and in a and you could you can still cast it out. You know, um, uh, because that spirit has to be obedient to the to the will of God and to to the word of God and go. But if that person willfully doesn't want it to go and 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 and, and fights to keep it, you know, it certainly can it can depart and return, or or it can it can stay. Um, it doesn't have to go um, if if the person doesn't want it to. So the will is involved here in 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 many in many instances, and there are other instances where a person is just totally taken over almost, and and uh, to the point that you know you just cast the spirit out in the name of Jesus and it goes. All right, um, I don't want to get into all the little specifics because there's so many little details that that differ. Um, how how's the best way to put it? Um, each situation has its own, own own challenges, but we have authority over the power of the devil. That's sufficient to say, and so we have the authority to cast the spirit out. But folks, again, I want to reemphasize to every person that's listening to me, okay? If you're going to pray for deliverance for somebody, you're going to cast out a, a spirit that is a, where a person is possessed, demon-possessed, yes, or where they're oppressed, being harassed from the outside by a demonic spirit. It could be a spirit of depression. <clears throat> it could be a spirit of lust. It could be uh, many different things, okay? But if that person is oppressed with that spirit and you're going to cast that thing out, make sure that you're filling the void with Christ. That would involve repentance. That would involve, for the Christian, a, recomm maybe a recommitment to the Lord, of of just just re, just resubmitting himself to the Lord and closing the doors where the where where, where the devil can try to have an inroad into his uh, soul life um, and into his physical body life where he's being harassed physically and attacked or he's being his 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 mind his soul is being harassed or 
um, you, we need to fill the void. And for the person that doesn't know the Lord, they have to ask Christ into their heart so that spirit does not return. Not only come back itself, but bring back seven times seven others, and the person's in seven times worse shape than he was or she was before. All right. So we want to understand that. So I hope that I've, I've explained that to you really. Now, I want to get into one scripture. That's all I have time to deal with this evening. Um, I can't take, I could take this a lot deeper. We could go into all types of things. What type, we could get into demonology and talk about different types of spirits. Uh, just like we could get into angelology and talk about the study of angels, all types of angels. And we can talk about all the different circumstances. And I could try to answer every question that a person would have. And I'm sure we could provide that answer. But I'm just trying to give a basic, uh, I guess, um, a, a, a demonic transference and demonic possession oppression 101. Okay, this is a very basic uh, uh, teaching, but I'm trying to put as much into it as I can with the amount of time that I have. All right, so I'm going to go to a second scripture, and I want you to turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians, not 2 Corinthians, folks. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 6, verse 16, okay? Uh, again, 1 Corinthians six sixteen. Okay, now we're going to deal with transference. And this is probably one of the best scriptures that I can give you that uh, will show you that uh, a spirit can be transferred from one person to another. All right? Um, and what we say, what, what do you mean? Okay, well, I'll get there, okay? Don't, let's not get ahead of, of it, uh, of the scripture. Let's read the scripture first and I'll come back and I'll explain it to you. Okay, it says, Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot, to a prostitute, is one body with her. For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. Uh-oh, wow, wow. Think about this for a minute, folks, okay? We know when, when a man and a woman get married, they become one. Whatever is in one person is in that other person. That, 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 the, 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 the act, okay, I'm going to have to get into this, the act of intimacy, let's put it that way in case kids are watching, okay? The act of intimacy creates a oneness, okay, a bond of oneness. And really kind of what's in one person go, it can, can meld into the other person. Do you get what I'm saying? All right, and that's why he's saying, he's warning you, do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot, a prostitute, becomes one with her? What does that mean, folks? Can you Im imagine this? Okay, you got to be very careful who you lay down with. All right, because whatever is in that person's spirit, when you lay down with that person, you there is a oneness. So what is it? What what is in that person comes over to you. It is transferred to you and you, the two, two become one, okay? And so what's in her is in is transferred to you. What's in you, it can be transferred to her. Um, I've seen, I've seen, and, 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 and as a matter of fact, let me say this, in the occult, a part of witchcraft and, and, and practice of the occult, the reason that, 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 um, Intimacy, we'll just say it, sex, okay, is so um, uh, dominant in witchcraft and cultic practices is for transfer transference of spirits. And the people that practice this already know this principle that you can transfer a witchcraft you, uh, through witchcraft you, and through, 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 through sex, okay? You can transfer um, uh, uh, demon power, um, oppressions, spells, which to, which are a form of oppression, and even possession to another person. Folks, this stuff really does happen. There are people that have gone and they have slept with the wrong person, somebody it wasn't they shouldn't have been with. You know, they should they they should they should have they should they let's they should they should have been should have stayed with the person they were married to or stayed away from anybody. But when you get involved in that kind of relationship, folks, 
you open the door. I don't know if I need to say it any any other way or make it any more clear, but yes, a pre, a person you could lay down with a person that is going through uh, major depression and major problems, and that absolutely can be transferred over to you in the form of uh, of, of possession if you're not a Christian. And if you're, let's say, a, a Christian, but you have slipped and you fell and you sinned, but you're believing in the Lord, you've asked Christ in your heart, you know, you, you it was a momentary bad decision, you slipped and fell. I don't believe that you you can, I don't believe you could be possessed at that particular moment, but I believe an, uh, an oppression could come uh, on you from that other person. And and you become a partaker of every, everything. Imagine this, every person that that, that person has slept with you know, she's picked up everything that those people have been with and so forth and so on. It kind of goes down the line. And so you, you end up with, um, what do you call it? A typhoid Mary, you know, or ty typhoid Jerry, you know, because he's he's got all kinds of stuff in him from all these other people that he's been with and the people that they've been with that they inherited stuff or, or, trans or things were transferred to them. And then they've moved on, transferred it to you. So... Can, you know, can can demonic oppression and demonic possession be transferred? Yes, it can. Okay, and I've already spoken about the difference between the Christian and, and the non-Christian, and who what is a Christian, and so forth and so on. So we're not going to get back into that now. But you need to understand, folks. It's very very important. Watch out what you do, especially you know when it comes to these areas of um, uh, fornication, adultery, um, you you can really you can you can really destroy your, your your life like that. If you've been involved in that, you got to break that bond. And, and, and you know if you're in, involved in a relationship with somebody, you know, and you and and you're not married to them, folks. I mean, this this kind of oppression just bounces back and forth between the two of you. And um, you, you and you wonder why you're having a difficult time breaking through, okay? Uh, there's there's something about marriage, okay? A uh, Christian marriage, and even even in the world of marriage, okay, the marriage sanctifies the person to 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 a certain degree, and, and not not in the same way in the world as it would a Christian. I mean, it's not, they're not sanctified in Christ, but at least they're 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 um um. They're not. They're not. They're not in sin anymore. Okay, and fornicating and stuff. So they're not continually passing uh, stuff back and forth, in 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 the way that they would if they were just um, uh, a person that's with a harlot that's sleeping with a lot of different uh, other people and then bringing it back to you or or, or so. So if you understand what I'm saying, so um, uh, these these issues of. Um, and I, 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 I'm, I'm spending some time in the area of the sexuality area, I guess, or in the intimacy area, uh, a lot because it's a problem, folks. I mean, it, it can be things can be transferred even through watching stuff. Okay, you know, we're, here we're talking about the actual act, okay, of intimacy. But you know, when you when you get around certain people, I don't know have have you ever walked into a room and two people were fighting and you didn't hear the fight, but you feel the 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 the, uh, the tension. There's a spirit behind that, and and in the same way, let's say you you, you watch a uh, pornography, okay, things can be transferred through that, also, you know, oppressions and and things just through through getting involved in it because you're opening your spirit up to something. So you have to be very, very careful, okay? When you have been uh, set free and you've made that decision, you've asked Christ into your heart, you, that, 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 that the Bible says, whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. So you're, that, that house has been swept clean, okay? But the enemy seeks to return unless you fill it with the Lord, okay. So when you're, when 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 we, what I meant to say, let me back this up, okay. What I meant to say is when you're delivered, okay, the house is clean, but you've got to fill the void with Christ, okay. Once the Lord is in your heart, okay, Satan cannot possess you, but he de he can come, and he can uh, uh, oppress you, 
if you allow it and if you uh, get involved in situations where you don't repent and you know you allow those spirits to hang around and and um and and we pray over people all the time that are oppressed uh by maybe a spirit of depression spirit of suicide spirit of uh, loss a lot of different things you pray for them and if they're not willing to to they they they'll, they'll accept the prayer and the the, the spirits leave I've, I've seen it happen but you know to uh, well, a week or two later or or maybe you don't see them for six months and they come back and they're in worse shape because they never filled the void or they they made they mouthed the words but then they didn't follow through and walk with the Lord. They ask say, Okay, I ask you into my life, Jesus, and they kind of nonchalantly do it, but then they don't mean it. They go right back out in sin and they just open up the door and it, it it's seven times worse than it was before. So folks, we we, we really gotta be careful and when you pray for people, you need to be aware uh, and you need to pray and you need to make sometimes you need to talk to people and ask some questions. Uh if it's in private yeah, so be it, you know. Uh, other times the Lord will speak to you and, 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 and so you know how to deal with these issues. So I hope that this has just kind of maybe whet the appetite for some things that we can talk about later. Um, I wish I had notes that I could see on the screen so people could type in the questions that they had and I could just answer them here on, online, but I don't have that capability with when I use the studio. I do if I go straight through Facebook Live, but I, I'm using a studio that doesn't allow me to see the comments, or if it does, I, I don't know how to use it yet. But um, uh, if you do have questions, um, yeah, contact me, you know, through, uh, you can go onto the YouTube site and actually you can, you can ask them or you can, leave comments on my Facebook page and you can ask a question there. And, um, if you do, I'll, uh, answer it. And if you, if you, if we're friends, you can message me privately and I can answer privately, uh, or you could just, uh, comment on public and I'll, I'll do the best I can to answer the question for you. Okay. So we got it done. It's 32 minutes and about 30, 36 seconds. So again, like I said, I just hope that you'll, uh, remember all of this. Okay. That, uh, we're talking about the transfer of demonic spirits, delivering the demon-possessed or the oppressed. Uh, we've explained the difference uh, between possession and oppression. We've answered the question, at least the best that I can answer it, uh, based on, on, on my understanding and my opinion, okay, on whether a Christian can or cannot be demon-possessed, okay? And we've talked about that, uh, how the importance of, a, of the house or human body after it's been emptied okay, that the void must be filled with Christ as soon as the Spirit is cast out, because if not, the Spirit seeks to return and not only come by itself, but bring others with it. And um, and uh, we've, we, we spoke about, um, uh, in the case that, that that would happen, the person being in worse condition than what he initially or she initially was, and we spoke about the transference of uh, of, of how a, a demon possession or oppression can occur simply through having uh, intimate or sexual relationships with somebody other than your husband or your wife, the wrong person, getting involved with a prostitute, going out and fornicating, getting involved in a relationship you shouldn't be in. You can transfer things. They can be, they can be transferred to you or you can transfer something to somebody else. So, you know, we need to be aware. Okay, so I pray that this has blessed you. Again, it's been short and to the point, but um, I hope that you got it. All right, and um, so I will see you, I guess, um, next Tuesday night um, at uh, 8 p.m. Uh, and uh, I know I'll be speaking in some other places in between. I've got several uh, speaking engagements coming up, so I'll try to broadcast those, and I'll give a heads up on Facebook here. Uh, as to when I'm going to be speaking, where, and what time you guys can tune in if you want to tune in live. Anyway, as I always say, keep your feet to the ground, keep your head to the sky, and I will see you, God willing, next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time here in Arizona, and that is, I believe, 7 p.m. I think it's an hour early. Yes, yeah, 7 p.m. Pacific Time. That will be in, uh, like in California, okay? So, God bless you guys. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.